The portfolio possibilities curve illustrates for us why there is a benefit to diversification when assets are imperfectly correlated. In order to illustrate the portfolio possibilities curve, which I have plotted here in green, I need a few assumptions, including a risk-free rate, I'm assuming 6%, and I'm keeping this portfolio simple. It only has, it's a portfolio with only two assets, A and B. Asset A has expected return of 8%, and a standard deviation or volatility of 10% as usual, denoted with sigma. And then asset B, I decided will have twice the risk and return. So 16% return, but on the other hand, 20% the volatility. This is the classic illustration that you see in a lot of finance textbooks, and we're operating in the mean variance framework. Mean variance, one of the assumptions there is that these assets only have a mean and a variance, so we're not capturing something like skew or heavy-tailed kurtosis. We only need two assumptions to characterize the assets. And then in the portfolio, finally, I need an assumption about the correlation between the assets and a decision as to how much I'm going to allocate. So on my portfolio possibilities curve, I'm starting here at the blue point, which reflects the decision to allocate into my portfolio entirely into the lower risk return asset A. So I have 100% here in asset A. That's the blue point. Hopefully it makes sense that it has an expected return of 8% and volatility of 10% because I'm entirely in asset A. Now I'm going to shift my allocation or increase to asset B and then I'm moving up the curve and I here I have an expected return for the portfolio and a volatility for the portfolio of 9.2%. Now I happen to know that for these assumptions, the minimum variance portfolio occurs at 80-20. It's actually easy to solve for the minimum variance portfolio. So my blue dot is now right on the green dot, which describes the minimum variance portfolio. And it's the furthest portfolio to the left here, being the lowest standard deviation on this portfolio possibilities curve. And it also illustrates for us really what is the magic of diversification. So diversification is a benefit that we can earn anytime there's imperfect correlation or correlation less than one. So here we have a zero, which is implied by independent assets. And notice that these portfolios expected return is 9.6, but the volatility in this case is of the portfolio. 80 allocated 80-20 is only 8.9%. Now this is somewhat almost magical because notice this portfolio volatility is lower than either assets individual portfolio. Somehow by mixing in the riskier asset that is imperfectly correlated or in this case very imperfectly correlated, we have achieved a portfolio variant, variance and volatility that's lower even than asset A's. Now, the key to that is the mathematically implied variance of the portfolio in the mean variance framework. So this is also one of the classic formulas in finance that the variance of the portfolio that combines A and B is the summation of here, the weight of A squared multiplied by the variance of A plus the weight of B squared multiplied by the variance of B plus here this third term that really is mathematically explaining for us the benefits of diversification and it's two times the weight times the weight times this is the covariance between a and b which itself is the product of the correlation here and each of the volatility so cor correlation times volatility a times volatility b gives us the covariance between a and b this is the formula for the variance, so taking the square root of it gives us the standard deviation, which is actually the x-axis on this portfolio possibilities curve. But it, here, it is this term that is really, in a, in a way, the way that I think about it, giving us the magical benefit of diversification owing to this imperfect correlation. And so when we have a zero, this is dropping out. And that's why we're all the way over here to the left of even asset A's volatility. 
Now, we could ask, well, that's great. If our goal is to minimize risk, we want to be at the minimum variance portfolio. Is that the best portfolio? Well, our theory says it's not the best portfolio, that we should keep going. And now I'm going to keep going by reducing allocation to A, increasing to B. And you can see I'm moving up now the concave segment of this curve. We were down here in the convex segment. And I'm going to go to 60, 40. And now we have, we're increasing both our risk and return here. And finally, uh, well, not finally, 50-50 gets me here to an expected return of 12% for the portfolio, which when we're 50-50, the expected return is going to be the average here of the 8 and the 16 for each asset. And now I know from already calculating it that our optimal portfolio, so to speak, is at about 45-55. So you can see I'm on the purple triangle. But we can there are analytical solutions for both the minimum variance portfolio and the optimal portfolio are also where the maximum sharp ratio is. The, it's very easy to get the minimum variance portfolio. It's less easy to get the uh, optimal or maximum sharp ratio portfolio. But the analytical solution is in the spreadsheet if you want to uh, uh, pull down, download that. What's my claim to saying this is the optimal portfolio? Well, we answer that. We say that is the optimal because it has the highest sharp ratio. So that's why I'm showing this formula here. The sharp ratio is the ratio of excess return divided by volatility. Excess return is the return in excess of the risk-free rate. So here at this allocation, our expected portfolio return is 12.4% minus the risk-free rate is the excess return of the portfolio. We divide that by the portfolio's volatility as given by the square root of this formula. And we get a sharp ratio here of just shy of 0.54. And it turns out that for these assumptions, that's the highest sharp ratio we can achieve on this plot. How can we also think about this? Well, if we anchor over here at the risk-free rate of 6% and draw a straight line of tangency, that's not a very great line, but the slope of this line is the sharp ratio because you, you can see this is a uh, slope is rise over run. So that's the excess return. And then the standard deviation or run is, is uh, given by this distance here. So the slope of this lo tangent line is the sharp ratio. And if we can, if we choose other points on the line, we're going to get any of those lines is inferior in terms of its slope. But of course, I can keep going here with less to uh, asset A and more to asset B. And now I'm still on the concave portion here, and I'm just getting more return, or I'm purchasing more return with more risk, so to speak. And I can go all the way up here to my, a portfolio that consists only of asset B. And of course, it has an expected return of 16% and a volatility of 20%. Although I can keep going, I can effectively borrow, which is leverage, and I can borrow to invest even more in asset B. And that's why we're moving up um, even further into the risk reward space. Okay, I'm going to go back finally to 50-50, uh, for example, and just summarize the four point things we might say about this or four things I would say about this portfolio possibilities curve. One, that correlation, here's the first thing, correlation determines the shape. I have a correlation assumption here of zero, but if the correlation were one, I just changed that to one. Um, really, this is the perfect correlation case where there is no benefit to diversification. Notice there's no curve or shape to this, and we just have a trade-off in terms of a linear trade-off in terms of risk and reward. So that's the first thing. Correlation determines the shape. I could actually go all the way to negative one, which is like a hedge, and achieve zero standard deviation. But if I go to point three, I can get... Um, partial hedge benefits and reduce this portfolio standard deviation even further below the, the riskiest assets standard deviation. Okay, so the second thing is that 
a, the minimum variance portfolio slices the portfolio possibilities curve in half, that's vertical halves, such that above this minimum variance portfolio is the concave segment, below it is the convex segment. And so what's interesting about that is that the concave segment is the efficient frontier. And so how we could think about that is that if we have a point here on the concave segment, we can also, we also have the choice to have, uh, I'm going to move that out a little bit here. Okay. I'm gonna, we also, we could have a point here or here. And this portfolio here completely dominates the portfolio here. Concave dominates every point in the, con, uh, in the convex segment because for example, right about here, both of these portfolios give us a about 10% standard deviation. But this one on the concave segment gives us a higher return for the same level of risk. So the concave segment dominates every point here on the convex. And so that is the efficient frontier. These portfolios are all the efficient relative to these. And the third, so the third point is the minimum variance portfolio. That's the point on the curve furthest to the left with the minimum standard deviation. And then the fourth point is the, that the optimal portfolio in theory is the one with the maximum sharp ratio, which also maximizes the slope of the tangent line here if we anchor on the risk-free rate. Thank you very much.